Okay, here we go guys. Long awaited tying video on my Isonychia slash Scott's Big Brown Nymph um, Wiggle Nymph, okay? Now I want to give you a little bit of history. My, I call it ISO just because I called it that for like, I've been using it now almost three years. And um, it started out as a traditional looking isonychia. Let me show you what this looks like. Okay. So this is a traditional looking isonychia. It's more gray. It's got the white stripe down it. Okay. This is tied on a size 12, 3X long. A, two, a TM Go 200 R hook. And um, so this is what it started out to be. Okay, skinny, um, like I said, pretty much a uh, gray body. There's uh, some lively legs on there that are brown ones, and still the uh, turkey, turkey feather back, um, backing and wing case. Okay, then put that down. Then I, uh, I was catching fish on it, not a ton, but I was catching fish, and like, I don't know, I would just say average amount of fish, and um. Uh, I was up Penn's Creek a couple times, and each time I was up there, I kept turning over rocks and seeing a ton of stoneflies. And I noticed on the underside of the stoneflies, they were really light colored. So I started, and and what happened was I made the my initial first batch of isos with the white stripe down them. I made a couple more after that. I left the white stripe out. I don't think it mattered one bit. I mean, it looks more like a, a see the, 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 the ISOs get that white stripe down them when they're getting ready to hatch. They don't, regular times they don't have that white, that black stripe down them. I mean the white stripe down them. And um, so, I mean the fish aren't normally seeing ISOs with the white stripe down them until they're ready to hatch. But I mean if you want to tie them up and make it exactly you know, look like the exact nymph, go ahead, but you don't, you don't need that white stripe in there, I really don't think so. And um, it's just another added step, and there's, in this pattern, there's enough of material already by, without adding another step. And um, so, the first batch looked like the one I showed you. Okay, then I, um, I told you I was at Penn's Creek, I saw the, uh, uh, a ton of uh, uh, stonefly nymphs and the underside of them was very light colored so I started coloring my abdomen uh, now the abdomen was lighter colored right underneath the thorax it was still it was lighter but a little bit darker so that's when I started tying up uh, show you this one here this is the abdomen of my wiggle nymph with a cream bottom okay and it's just a natural looking hair is here on the underside of the thorax okay so that's my wiggle nymph that's what we're gonna tie today okay and I started doing it that way and I started catching a lot more fish I mean it was just out fishing all of my flies and I have taken it everywhere every stream in Pennsylvania I use it um, January through December year-round it just catches fish it is a, a fish catcher and you know, I use, I said in some other videos that, you know, if you could take a fly pattern, a nymph or whatever up to the Delaware and catch fish on it, man, that is the proving grounds up there. If you can catch fish on a fly, you know, a pattern up on the Delaware, then it is legit. <laughs> that, that fly is legit if you can catch fish up on the Delaware on it. So... Uh, so that's how I started tying them and that's what I stuck with and that was just, you know, whether it's the bicolor combination of the abdomen, whether it's the brassy um, gold ribbing, whether it's the lively legs on it, that pattern I trialed and errored and that's what I've come up with and it just works. So whether you want to call it, which I called it ISO for a long time, now in the past year since Holsinger's been tying it up for me, um, uh, you know, then I've been calling it Scott's Big Brown Nymph, and it's a combination of the two, it, it's just, it's just a big brown nymph, but I get caught up, you know, calling it an ISO sometimes, calling it Scott's Big Brown Nymph sometimes, but 
And for you guys who don't tie, please check uh, check out Whole Singer's website um, or call them. I, I, I suggest calling them and speaking to um, either Sean or his dad and placing an order in because sometimes they get backed up with orders. And the size that I use in the regular nymph is a size 12 3x long and the size that I use in the wiggle nymph is a Tiemco 100 standard dry fly but the 100 has a wide gap and you need a wide gap because of how thick the abdomen is and the uh, number how thick the thorax is okay you need the 100 hook for the thorax the abdomen is a Tiemco 200 R hook it's a 3x long size 16 both the number 16s TMC 116 for the thorax and a TMC, TMC stands for TMCO, uh, 200 R hook, size 16 for the abdomen. So that's what we're going to use today, okay? Okay, so here we go. We got our 200 R hook right there in the vise, and we're going to start off. We are using brown, dark brown, 6O uni thread, okay? I like a little thicker thread. You, this is a big nymph, so you can, um, I'm going to take my glasses off. I can see better when I'm tying without my glasses. Okay. So you're going to start right a little bit behind the uh, eye of the hook. You can see here. And we're just going to go back. Okay. Now I don't break off my threads. I just cut everything off. Okay. Next thing we're going to use is brown oyster churl. These are the little feathers, little plumes, or little feathers up near the plume, the top plume, the top of the plume, okay? Uh, if you have to use the bottom ones, in my earlier video I did show you can use the big ones, you might only have to use three or four or five, and you can cut them off the length of the tail. When I'm using the top of the plume, I'll grab about six of them because they're not as tough, uh, and they may break off after a couple fish, so I tie some extra ones in there just in case. So I'm going to grab here about six of them. Okay, cut them off the plume. Uh, they're pretty much, I like to line them up a little better. Okay, take our time. This fly you, this is a fly you don't knock out in um 10 15 minutes okay so we're going to extend that about a half inch okay about a half inch behind the uh bend of the hook okay i'm going to go all the way back to the start of the bend okay stop wiggling Okay, there we go. Then we are going to tie in, this is size BR, BR stands for brassy, uh, of our gold rib. Okay, I'm going to stand that up a little higher so it takes on the whole thickness of the shank. It helps out the whole thickness of the shank. I'm going to leave it to one side, but my back side a little bit more. Okay, leave that back there. You want to go up to secure it in more you can well, you don't have to okay then we're going to get the back shell or and this is going to be part of the wing case this is my turkey feather I lacquer each side of the turkey feather lightly with clear spray on lacquer just a light coating on each side I'm going to cut about a three millimeter wing width down here because as it goes out towards the end, it tapers skinnier. And that's what the skinnier end we're going to use towards the back of the hook. Okay, so just eyeballing it. And if it's too much, this one's a little too much. I'll take one of the. Let me see. Eh, let me get another one. <laughs> that one's got a split in it. Okay, we'll do this again. Okay, and that one's perfect. Okay, so here it's about three millimeters at the wide end, about two millimeters down here at the outside end. 
Okay, we're gonna cut off that. And they're pretty much the same color on both sides, not really much different. So we're gonna put that on right back near the back of the hook and go back to the bend again right where the tail starts. Okay, right there. And then today I am using, I usually use brown, but I'm running out of the brown. I don't like a super dark brown, I like more of a lighter brown for the ostrich of a, um, for ribbing for the abdominal gills. Uh, so I already cut one off. Here it is. And this is from a, a gray plume. Okay. And we're going to tie that in right here. I mean, this is not bad at all because all you're doing is bringing everything forward at the end. See, you got the ribbing, you got the turkey feather, and you got the, the uh, ostrich hurl plume there. And now we are going to dub on. I'm going to get some wax here. Let me take my fly box out of here. Put some dubbing wax on our thread. And with dubbing, that old saying, less is more. You can always build it up, but it's a pain to work sometimes with a lot of dubbing on your thread. So you just look at the amount. This is a mix. I use cream, okay? But I, depending wh whose brand you use, if you're using synthetic, if you're using dyed rabbit fur or whatever, cream is good. Uh, I'm mixing my cream. This is actually a ginger raccoon, and I'm mixing it with cr cream antron. But it's still, it's just a cream color. I just mix it with a little bit of antron because the antron has a little bit of sparkle to it. Okay, so you want to do this not too heavy, but you want to cover up at least the thread because you don't want to see that thread shining through there. Or, or you just don't want to see the thread in there. The thread's a dark brown thread, and I like having that. Sometimes um, when I'm making not the wiggle nymph, my regular nymph, I'll use um, either tan or even white thread for the abdomen. Then I'll switch over the color of the thread for the for the thorax because uh, I like I like my uh, abdomen nice and creamy looking. And sometimes it seems no matter how I try, I can still see that thread through the, uh, the dubbing. So now I'm dubbing this probably about three or four times the uh, thickness of the thread. Okay. Put on more. But you don't want it too heavy. Now, you know what, I better not go any more than that because when I dub, I am going to hit my camera. <laughs> I, yes, huh? So I'm going to slide this up a little more. I'll stretch it out when I, because I'm going to hit the camera. <laughs> like that. Okay, let's go back to the back here. Okay. Now I'm going to pull this down like I said do, don't usually <laughs> I don't do this when I'm tying him because there's no camera in the way but right now there's a camera in the way so okay let's get a little bit more on there so this Abdomen. Actually, the whole thing's easy. You just got to take your time doing it. Okay. Just got to take your time. This is a fly. Like I say, it may take you a half an hour to tie. And definitely it's taking me longer now because I'm doing an instructional video. So I'm taking my time. It's roughly about a half an hour to make the wiggle nymph. Not much different. Maybe an extra five minutes than, than tying the regular ISO. Okay. So... Let's finish this abdomen dubbing. You don't, there, I don't want to crowd the hook. So I'm going to pull this down. Take that off of there. Okay. There. You don't want to crowd the eye, I want to say. 
Okay. Okay, so now put my dubbing back in its bag. And I love these hackle pliers. These are swivel hackle pliers that a lot of times, or well, just about every time you use your, your ribbing hackle, they twist, and this keeps it from twisting, okay? Because it's a swivel on the hackle plier. So we're going to get roughly about five or six. There's one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to just, ah, ah. Okay, I'm glad that happened because when it happens to you guys, you're going to see <laughs> that's just natural. It happens sometimes. You're pulling it a little too tight. We'll do that again. Two. Okay. Three. Four. Five. And let's get up here. We'll tie that off. And believe me, without a camera there, it's a lot easier. Okay, so there, that's done, and super easy, you're just going to pull the backing over, going to bring it a little bit on my side, because when I pull down on the back side, it's going to position it right on top, so it's a little bit over on my side. See ribbing. Okay, we can go the same way, no need to counter wrap. One. I'm just following right up next to the uh, ribbing on the uh, ostrich hurl. Two, four, five, and we are done. Like I said, a lot easier to do when there's not a camera here. I'm, I'm pressed for space. So the abdomen is done. Cut it off. And let's put about four whip finishes in that baby. Four or five. Like I said, I'm just taking my good old time for you guys. And so the abdomen done. There's the tail sticking out. Cut that thread off. Boom. And we're going to put that off to the side for a minute or two. Okay, so there you go. Okay, you see that? Beautiful, nice cream, bicolored. I should have kept it here. Let's keep it in there. And I'll spin it for you. Okay, so that looks nice and pretty. You can see those ostrich, looks like nice gills on the abdomen. So now we're gonna get our TMC 100 hook, size 16, stick it in there. Okay, right there. And we're gonna use <clears throat> .015 thread. Okay, and let me find the end of it. I roughly took off you know, two, two to three inch portion. I'm going to just wrap it on roughly about ten times. We'll see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. And we'll go eleven. Slide it back a little on the hook. Twelve. We'll go 12, okay? And just break it off, pull it, break it off. There's a little end sticking out. 
You're just going to tuck them under and press them down with your fingernail so they're nice and flat. Okay, that's sometimes a pain to do, but it only takes a second. Okay, so now, there we go. Let's slide it back a little. Don't want to crowd the eye. I'm going to use our 6-0 brown thread again. Start up here. I'm going to build a little dam on this side of the uh, lead wrap. And you're going to save this little piece here because that's going to help the thread to not go in between uh, the lead wraps. And you don't do it uh, tight. You do it just nice and snug. Just And I do it at an angle so it doesn't fit down inside the wrap, the lead wraps. Come back to this side. Okay. Let's take... Cut the thread off then. Okay. And then we're going to go back up again at a diagonal. Go back again. Okay. I don't, my first video I used to squish the thread. I don't do that anymore. Okay. So now we're going to get our um, the connecting, what you connect the two uh, bodies, the abdomen and the thorax with, you, I use 4X fluoro, or just 4X mono, it doesn't matter. So 4X, okay? And um, you, it, you can't go directly on top and the bottom because the hook is in the way. So it's going to be slightly off to one side. I usually put it slightly off to the back side. So I'm going to put this on back here. I'm going to start on my side and then I'll take it over with my fingernail like there. It's already I'll make it a little tighter. Boom. Okay. So now Okay. Now it's slightly off to the side up here. And you're going to make, you're going to follow, well, I'm not even going to say, won't do that for you. Just leave it hanging out the back and then you're going to slide on. This is the back end. We just tied the abdomen. You're going to slide on your abdomen that you already made. Okay. And you're going to put that also, do it that way, there you go. I'm going to start up a little bit higher up here. I like to pull it up tight at first because I'll show you what I do. Okay, so this is the hardest part of it, which isn't even hard, but I just say it's the hardest part. So now, just connecting that. So now it's on the downside, and it's, this is tight up against the back hook. So you want to pull this out at least two millimeters. You need enough space there so that it can wiggle. If you don't, if you make the back loop too small, it'll it won't wiggle. It'll be too tight. Um, you got to give this room here to wiggle. Okay. So let me turn this this way. Oh, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Okay, we're going to cut this off. So now we're connected. And bring us back here. Boom. So now we're connected and it, it's a wiggle nymph now. Okay. Now, what I do is I put a little bit of super glue on the top and bottom because um, I usually start out with keeping the back hook on. But sometimes these wiggle nymphs, depending how they're flopping around back there and wiggling. Um, ooh, that was way too much. <laughs> way too much. Um, just put a little drop on it so it soaks into the threads. Okay. Um, 
the wiggle nymph, the back hook will sometimes catch on the front hook. Um, or it'll just get tangled. So I, I've caught plenty, plenty of fish with both hooks on. But at some point, if it gets too tangled or I'm messing with it too much, I just put it in my pliers, wiggle the back hook uh, left and right three or four times and just break it off. Okay, and then it does not affect your catchability at all because the fish take the whole nymph and I have caught plenty of fish both ways with just one hook or two hooks. But I'll start out with two hooks. Um, or if I make up six of them, I'll make up three with the hooks on and uh, three of them I'll break the back hook off. But I'll let it start that way. Okay, now we're going to put on our wing case here off of the turkey um, uh, section that we cut off. I'm going to go cut this back. See now it's thinner down this end, it's thicker at this end. I'm going to go up to the, uh, I'll put it right around there, I'm going to cut that off. I want it closer to three millimeters, okay? Closer to three millimeters, and we're going to put that in. Boom. And I won't go over too much. Boom, there you go. And I want to go down the bend of the hook a little bit because we need that whole hook for the lively legs. Okay? We need that whole hook. Okay, so there we are. We got the wing case in. And now we're going to dub on our hair zero, which I am using just a medium natural hair zero color. Okay, Let's get that out of the bag here. And it could be SLF, it could be squirrel, um, you know, it doesn't matter. Just as long as it's a medium brown color. I got a mix of guard hairs and the regular dubbing fur in there. Um, I like, you know, I like having some guard hairs in there. Make it look a little buggier. When you're tying teeny, teeny small flies, 18s, 20s, 22s, or even smaller, then you want dubbing, super fine dubbing that doesn't have guard hairs. But when you're tying big, bigger nymphs, the guard hairs do nothing but help it. Okay, well, remember, I can't make that too long. I'm going to hit my camera. Am I? No, I'm good. Okay. So now, let's go back a little further. Yeah. I'm just going to put one layer on. Okay, I don't want to go too close. Put some more wax on. Now, if you're making this fly up, I suggest, you know, if you're going to make like four of them to start out with, or two, get all your material ready, cut off your stuff, get everything ready, and everything will go a lot smoother than if you, like, I'm doing some of the stuff and showing you me picking through and cutting stuff because, you know, this is a tutorial, but, um... Get all your, I suggest you getting all your stuff ready and making it, um, abdomens out of the way, stick them off to the side and they'll be done. Okay. So now we are using Lively Legs, uh, brown with some purple flex in it, flakes in it. And this is the size small for 14 and 12 hooks. Okay. So that's what we're using for brown. I use brown and I use the yellow with the flakes in it too. So I use both of them. They both work great. And we're putting all three legs on. Make sure you have it back enough so you don't crowd the eye. Okay. Now I'm already dubbed up. I'm dubbed up. And there you go. Position that afterwards. So get my pliers here. Grab that tab. And pull it back over to reposition it right on top. Uh, am I missing? Oh, I'm over top of one of my legs. <laughs> Let's do that better. 
Okay. So there we are. We're going to pull this one back over this way. There you go. Get them nice and even on top. Now we're going to tie off the front. Go over the front. You got to pull that tab over this way to reposition it. I'll do two or three on top. I'll do one or two under the bottom. And it's all done. It's all on there. And then, with your tweezers, grab those tabs, pull up. Boom, cut that tab off. Pull up. Boom, cut that tab off. And then, we are just about to, we're going to pull the wing case over. Okay. Looks like it's hard for me, but it is hard for me because of the camera. <laughs> like I said, it's super easy when there's no camera here. So there you go. We're going to get this. Pull it up a little. Cut that off. Now you know what, guys? We are done. Now, they have a nice big head on them. Okay. And we're going to whip finish it. We are done. Get my tweezers here, and so it's wiggling in the back. You can see it all. There it's wiggling. There it is. I'm gonna spin it around. Okay. Got a nice thicker abdomen. A nice, I mean, a nice thicker thorax with the three lively legs on. We're using all three legs. Oop, put that back over that way. And we got the abdomen that's bicolored with the brassy um, ribbing. Got our nice fluffy ostrich tails. And when I'm done, now I do love how it looks if you use the UV um, clear coating on it. But honestly, I've gotten away from using that because. After you catch a couple fish or you're fishing all day with it, it gets so scratched up and dull. It's really hard to see the um, all the details in the in in a um, in your nymph when that clear coating gets all scratched up and dulled up from fish or from rocks. So I just use a little bit of super glue right there. Let it soak in. And just to toughen that up because the fish's teeth are going to tear that apart. And that is it. We are done. Okay. So I don't know if it was a half an hour, maybe around a half an hour. But uh, when you're not talking <laughs> and you're paying attention and you're cranking out uh, your nymphs, it, it, I don't, maybe it'll still take about a half an hour, but that's about it. I know for you guys, it's going to take you longer. It will, but once you tie this up, half a dozen or a dozen times you'll you'll start cranking them out so that is our wiggle nymph this is scott's big brown wiggle nymph uh please um if you're not tying or you think it's too much or too hard call whole singers they will sell them to you put in an order uh, i know at times they get backed up with these because they get they get a lot of orders for them and um but you know if you want to try it yourself i have I'll, I'll i'll put the ingredients um uh up on the uh, and that'll be in the description of my video the ingredients again the recipe again for this uh pattern and um uh give it a shot okay tie up a few of them you know you need the ostrich hurl brown a medium brown don't go for a super dark brown or like i said I've, I've been tying a lot of them up in a gray the gray looks really neat even when it's wet cream dubbing for your ab, ab lower abdomen a turkey feather um spray lacquer it lightly on each side let it dry and then you can use it afterwards your small size 14 to 12 brown or yellow lively legs when i make up my ginger version my ginger version i'm just using ginger colored uh, like it's like a dirty yellow um 
ostrich curl and tail and the yellow lively legs and brown uh, 6-0 uni thread and regular hair's ear underneath of the thorax and that is it and then you need your 4x mono or fluoro whatever you want to use and make sure that you um, uh, put a little bit of super glue after you tie the back end in on inside uh, on that mono just to secure it but I have brought in several plenty of big big fish on the back hook and it is secure I haven't lost one fish yet um, because of the mono breaking okay so I have not one fish has this got torn off uh, and uh, and even in snags and stuff so uh, the forex is strong enough and like I said if you want to uh, if it gets tangled too much <clears throat> while you're fishing you can always break off that back hook and your front hook is still um, as, as effective it doesn't take any of the effective way of hooking up with fish okay so I hope you guys like that if you did please give it a thumbs up and please go out and try because this is a fish catcher I started I started this and tying it using it uh, I said in one of my videos as a novelty I just thought it was kind of neat looking ah, let's just try it but then it became legit I mean I was catching fish on it and um, I can't say it's better I just say it's just as good as the um, the regular ISO nymph the one piece uh, nymph and uh, but it's nice to have another option in case they want a little bit more wiggle or something they see in it that, they, that the fish like but I do catch a lot of fish on the wiggle nymph so okay guys thank you very much see you later bye bye